This is a series of videos that tell the story of how my father and I came up with the four universal motions in physics. We highly recommend that you watch these videos in order. Enjoy. Today, I will be talking with my dad about how he solved one of the greatest problems in physics and didn't even know it. Okay, Dad, let me set this up. Um, we had a meetup, which was those meetings that you try to get people in person to come to your house and talk about a certain subject. So I was trying to do a couple of meetups. The first one was at my house. We had a couple of new people. Didn't turn out so great. They wanted to talk about different things, but we tried it. Then we tried it again at your place, at your apartment. And we're here in Boca Raton, Florida. And um, so we had over, it was myself, of course, my dad, who was giving the talk on this, this case, gravity, and my mom was there, and uh, Robert Berger, who's a colleague of mine from um, where I worked at LexisNexis. So that was the setup, and then you started giving us a talk on gravity, and then afterwards started talking. So what, what was your talk about that day? Have been uh, working uh, on, on gravity uh, based on... Uh... Uh, George Louis Lesage's idea that gravity was caused by a particle that uh, coming at you at all at all directions, and and uh, part of the discussion uh, is uh, to show how that concept actually uh, causes gravity, and 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 Lesage knew it right away. In fact, he was so excited, he wrote his father a note, sent it to him, saying, "Eureka, Eureka! I've discovered." A mechanical cause for gravity, and uh, uh, so uh, at this meetup, I was talking about gravity in the context of the of that uh, particle uh, method of doing it. Well, it's a twenty. It was it was ten years ago. It was two thousand fifteen, right? Yeah. About this time, it was in June. So it's almost literally ten years ago. So yeah. Uh, I think you were you were sitting in your chair. We were sitting on the couch, and we had it on the on your TV set with the PowerPoint. So uh, at the end of that, the three of us uh, were were just talking together and chatting. Primarily, I think uh, you and Robert were doing the talking, and I was sitting there listening. I, I I think I was a little perturbed with you at that point because I sent you the uh, email that. Mm -hmm this information in it and you didn't respond one bit and, and i thought you know whether it was good or not uh, you, ought, you ought to give a response and say yeah dad i got the the email with the word doc and uh but let me let I me got... explain let me explain to the eyes first what happened you were sending at the time just reams of one page or a couple paragraphs of white papers ideas right and so yeah. I was getting these uh, barrages of them and I read them. I read them over and I didn't, you know, uh, necessarily uh, uh, contemplate and read them in depth, but you would send me lots of them. And I think this was one that was sent. I'm not sure. Was it sent individually or with a group? I don't remember, but certainly you did send it to me and I kind of read through it. They were mostly individual. I, uh, I, I worked on an idea when I finished uh, writing up a Word doc. I I sent it. So it's so yeah, you sent it to me, and I didn't yeah I didn't get it or really look at it deeply to understand what's going on. Probably because of the graphics. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, the very simple graphics. I, you mm -hmm. know, anybody, an any three year old would understand what I was drawing. No. No, no. <laughs> All right, I'll let you go on with the story, but that's kind of the background of what. Yes, you did send it to me. It had graphics, but uh, okay, let's keep going here. So you were perturbed with me, right? Yeah, I was perturbed with me with you, and, and at the end of my presentation on gravity, while you and Robert were talking, I uh, I finally uh, decided to uh, not just send you more email because I wasn't getting very far with that. I decided I actually had to to get up and, and and you know stare you in the face and and explain it and like you said I still didn't know I was solving some big problem I was just describing an idea about uh, what light could be 
And, and so while you and Bob were talking, I finally interrupted loud enough that that you both turned around and looked at me. And then I described, I said, Dave, uh, you know, and I I think I used my fists and, and, and showed that uh, two, two peaks of a wave, uh, a, a, a big peak and a, a valley in between and, and the moving SPC and uh, uh, described them in terms of, of a clump of particles where the amplitude was determined by how many or how few the particles were, the wavelength determined the frequency and all moving at speed C. And I don't know how much, I probably didn't say that much at that point, but when I described with my fist, uh, you got all excited. All of a sudden, your, your, the, your conversation with Robert changed and, and you're saying a whole bunch of stuff. I, I don't know what you, what, I would have liked to have a recording of that. that that would you know maybe someday you could repeat that for me <laughs> i don't think i can i was going nuts i really was <laughs> and uh and and so uh finally i yelled at you uh, loud enough to get your attention i said dave it's just a model it's just that's all it is just a model and you turned around stopped turned around looked me right in the face and you said just a model like yeah. i was like, yeah, I was going nuts. Yeah, yeah, I was going nuts because <clears throat> because you know for for decades we were looking at models for things and light and gravity and all that, and I really had never seen any model that satisfied me or or clicked. And when you moved your two, what happened is when you moved your two fists, I just saw the simplest concept, and that is. A photon can't exist. A photon, this this would be a photon. You can't have a wavelength. One thing can't have a frequency. Frequency means there has to be more than one thing. When you put up your hand and then they move together, I got it because what it means is that waves of particles moving together could describe light. And I saw that because I saw the two particles. I didn't see even clumps. You talk, talk about clumps. I don't remember clumps. I don't remember that at all. And um, I think that's when it really hit me that, wow, this is, a, this is something that we really have now that is a model of light that solved what we know as the wave particle duality. And I, I, I don't think I said any of that to you during our conversations. I mean, uh... I was going, well, no, no, no. At the end, at the end, I did. I turned around at the end when I was leaving, and I in in. Oh you were saying, yeah, you uh, uh, you were walking out the door, and I was yes. standing there with the door open, and, and you, you were still you were still dumbfounded, like yeah, right. You had no idea. <laughs> no, no, you weren't. But the thing is, you were dumbfounded, and I was just pacing up and down. I already kind of do that anyways when I'm excited, but I was pacing up and down, and I was just ranting and talking and just my head was exploding because i had just seen the first viable model a uh, particle model for light and not not an ether model not a photon i got the idea the problem we've had with light is that it is a frequency and you have to have more than one thing with that so that's what i saw but i didn't say anything about the way particle dolly i was just excited i said i saw it i saw it right away and as we were leaving, then I think what happened was um, I was still excited. We took a picture. It was a picture I took for the meetup, but uh, it's in our book, our, our Principia Mathematica 2 book. And um, it, there we were. I knew that this was someday something we had to, to keep uh, a, a record of and took the picture. And then eventually I calmed down and we uh, adjourned the meeting. And then when I was at the at your door, um, you're just you were just kind of saying, I don't know what why are you so excited? And and I said, you just I turned around and said, Dad, you just solved the wave particle duality. And I thought at that point you knew what that was. But th is that true? You knew what that was? No, not the duality. No. I have no idea. Uh, and I've said this uh, before when we've talked about it. Uh, uh, 
I didn't sit down and say to myself, okay, here's this, here's this problem that science has. It's, they call it the wave particle duality. Now I'm going to solve it. No, I didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, I, I came at it from a different direction. It, in one sense, by saying that I'm going to solve that problem, kind of leads you in the wrong direction because almost like there yeah. is no direction. You, you, there's nowhere to go from there. What happened? I mean, I told you about the wave particle duality and then what was the, did well, you come, come to believe that's what you did? What, what happened well, after that? After well, I closed the door, I what happened? I went back to my uh, office sitting in front of the computer like I'm doing now. And, and uh, I looked up a uh, wave particle duality, tried to read it and understand it. And uh, uh, if I remember right, uh, it, it probably took me two or three days to understand, well, yeah, yeah, the model does solve that problem. Maybe there's other solutions, but this one seems to solve that problem. And, and uh, but the, the interesting part to me is that I didn't believe I was supposed to be the one to do that. <laughs> and and I, for two weeks, I'm sitting there. Uh, no, no, it wasn't Robert D. Hilser who did that. Uh, it couldn't possibly have been me. I think what happened was you, you, you were in that period and you didn't come to me in two or three days. You came to me weeks uh, later. Two weeks. And so in other words, in, in a couple of days, two, three days, you realize that this is a solution to the wave particle duality. And then for the next two weeks, you struggle with the idea. Why did I come up with it? Why right? me? Yeah. Oh, well, who stuck me with this? <laughs> but it was funny because many years later, um, I think through the years, I think I came up with a viable idea about why that was. And that's something we're going to talk about uh, in our next episode. So that's amazing. I remember that day bouncing around. Um, I've had a few aha moments from, from uh, science and physics, uh, and this was certainly one of them, prob probably the biggest. So congratulations on uh, yeah. really coming up with a, a real model for the wave particle uh, duality. Well, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not going to uh, go through anything that goes into detail. But from that point on, this whole thing just kind of blew up. Oh, yeah, that's another story. That's another story. You're absolutely right. Well, that's one reason to stay tuned, everybody. Thanks so much again, Dad, for this talk. And uh, we will be back uh, in our next episode and talk about how and why did my dad even come up with this solution? Why didn't somebody else come up with it? That's another story. Mm -hmm.